podcast for podcasters by podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Hello and welcome. We are so excited that you're here today. My name is Norma Jean Belenke. I'm the head of events here at Podbean. And today we're joined by Bethany Hawkins. We're talking all about podcast growth, growing your podcast. And Bethany Hawkins is an amazing podcast service business owner. She has a company called Crackers and Soup, which is really, really incredible. They produce a lot of different podcasts. And, you know, as a black woman, she's a black owned business. And there's a lot of really great wisdom that Bethany is going to share today. I'm so excited that she's here with us. Hi, Bethany. Hi, Norma. Ah, thank you so much for the warmest, warmest welcome. And the audience doesn't know, but we have been kicking for the last 40 minutes before we've been hit record. So we are ready with the energy. We are ready with the energy. We're so excited that you're here today. I'm going to read our brief intro and then we will jump in and get started. So welcome back, everyone, to Podcasting Smarter and our February live event, Amplify and Thrive, Growth Secrets from a Black-Owned Podcast Business with Bethany Hawkins, the founder of Crackers and Soup, a thriving podcast service business and production studio. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Podcasting Smarter has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and experts throughout the industry. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. This event is one of many resources and events Podbean offers for free to empower you to launch and succeed in your podcasting journey. We also have some great events in March coming up that are linked here in the description of today's event on branded podcasting and everyone's favorite topic these days, AI and the new AI that Podbean has launched. Podcasting Smarter is brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. And now we'll get started. Hi, Bethany. Yay, Podbean doing all of the big things. So we are so excited that you're joining us here today because we're here to talk all about podcast growth. And that's going to mean something different for every podcast, right? For every podcaster, for every audience, what we bring to the table, our experience, you know, whether that's work, life experience, podcasting experience, all of that stuff. So I'd love for you to first share a little bit about, you know, your journey of building crackers and soup and how, you know, building your own podcast service business production studio, what that's been like and how you started as a podcaster. So I was in the corporate world for almost 20 years. Don't let the good skin fool you. I am older than I look. <laughs> <laughs> so when I decided to leave that type of work and begin my own business, I knew that I wanted to create a business that was impactful and powerful. And I had been introduced to to podcasts, I had started listening to them, and I resonated so much with so many of the stories that I was hearing from women that looked like me, from women that sounded like me, from women who were having the same experiences as me. So I knew in my business, I wanted somebody else who was sitting in that cubicle getting ready to cry every day because they knew that this was not where they were supposed to be in life anymore. That same feeling of togetherness, that same feeling of friendship, that same feeling that somebody out there knows what they are going through. So just hang on a little bit, keep listening, because there are going to be ideas and sparks. There's going to be ideas that spark the next transition that they are going to, to be prepared for. And I've done that. I Amazingly, I have vetted our clientele. So our clients run the gamut of people who are doing solo podcasts, sharing their wisdom and their genius, interview style podcasts, to all the way to narrative style podcasts where there it's heavy sound design and people are just telling their stories. It, but all of them have the same piece of connection that they are speaking to their audience, people who are loyal to them. They're engaging them with the content that they're sharing. And 
I have just been so blessed to see them not only skyrocket in their podcast, but skyrocket in their business as well, because they very much set an intention on why they are creating this podcast and move into that intention with what they do every episode that they drop. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of your clients have podcasts for their businesses, right? And so can you talk a little bit about specifically getting clear on what you want to focus on and what you can get out of your podcast, especially if you're using podcasting maybe to promote your business or services? You really have to know and understand what you're doing in your business. So if you know that for second quarter, you're going to be having a slew of courses or masterminds or even surveys, you're going to want to be creating content that very much is in collaboration with what, with what you're going to be sharing in your business. So you are getting your audience excited about that particular topic before you even drop it, before you even launch it. And you can keep your, your audience engagement by offering them a survey to fill out. So if we were talking about a particular niche of what you, what's your niche? Let's just throw that. Right. What's your niche? Yeah, a, let's, whole, let's, a whole business helps out, you find your niche. Let's throw out a niche. I love, I love talking about a niche. Let's talk about maybe who somebody who is a personal finance um, expert and coach. Right. Perfect. So maybe, maybe, yes. uh, yeah, I always, I, I love personal finance. So people may be focusing on retirement or savings or how you can kind of maximize that. Let's talk about that. That's a good example. <laughs> Personal finance, you have a masterclass that is going to focus and concentrate on what happens if you filed your taxes late. So what you're going to want to do is build a bunch of these episodes where you're talking about what it means to file your taxes on time. And then for the last few episodes before you announce your masterclass, well, what happens if you file your taxes late? You're going to give a basic parameter and understanding of what that's going to look like, even what that feels like. Are you going to be stressed? Are you going to be overwhelmed? And then you're going to do a survey. How many people have filed their taxes late in, in their entire lifetime? What did that feel like to them internally? How did that feel in their family? Did it impact their significant other if they had a significant other? And then all of that information you're going to talk about in the next episode because you have all of this beautiful data and you can also incorporate it in the masterclass that you're going to be presenting. So you have already given the audience what they want without them even knowing that that's what you were doing just by asking them and taking that information and applying it to your masterclass. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, for every podcast, there's a different audience that you want to reach, right? And so I think what you said is is really, I, and I love this example, because for whatever you're using your podcast for, and a lot of your clients are utilizing podcasting for their business, right? They have a product to sell, they have a service that people can sign up for, they have a course, something like that. And so <clears throat> it's something where, you know, once you're focused on that, you can focus on, okay, here's the content that I'm going to give people. And here's the problem that my services or product is going to solve. Let me explain. Let me explain that. Let me focus in on that. So I think that that's a really great aspect as well. And you really get to build that journey, right? And it's not something where it's a hard push. We talk about this all the time in podcasting. It's not something where, you know, you're going to be hard selling anybody anything. It's relational. It's conversational, right? I think that's the whole point of podcasting as well. I also want to talk about, you know, that launch phase and, you know, when people are in that initial information gathering and planning phase of their podcast. So what are some of the challenges that you've encountered in helping your clients grow their podcasts? And what have you done to tackle them and to set up systems in place? Because I know you're also like a queen of systems, which I want to talk about a bit later. I love, I love that so much. Um, but what are some of the things you put in place to, you know, get over those initial challenges and to set podcasters up for success in terms of that sustainable long-term growth? One of the very first things that we do, and I think that this di differentiates us from other podcast production companies, is before we talk about what success means to you, how to grow, where to grow, what things you need to implement in order to grow, I want to know about you. I want to know about Norma Jean. 
What is your daily everyday life processes? Are you somebody who gets up in the morning and you're rearing to go? Or are you somebody who has to drink 20 cups of coffee and then by 2 p.m. you hit your stride? I want to know if you live uh, halfway across the world from me. Because when we have meetings, are you going to be up at 6.30 a.m. and I'm up at 6 p.m. having this discussion and you're going to be tired and not hearing? I really implement my clients to dig deep and know who they are. Because if they don't know who they are, they can't set themselves up for success. If they don't know who they are, they can't share that with their audience. If they don't know who they are, they don't know how they're going to articulate what they're trying to sell. And when you are authentically you, you're more likely to show up. It's when you're putting on a performance that that's when I feel like people pod fade. It gets exhausting trying to be somebody else and show up in a way that just isn't natural to you. So I always go to, let's tap into who you are. Let's tap into your habits and let's work with your habits to make you successful. And then we can worry about all of the other things later. I love that. You know, I think we talk about this all the time at Podbean in terms of your personal bandwidth, but it's also working with who you are as a person. And that's a really great and important thing that you just said, right? If you're putting on a performance, it's going to get old. It's going to get old for you. It's po- possibly going to get old for the audience. Um, and that's something that's important to remember because podcasting isn't, you know, a one and done thing. It's a continual process. It's a continual relationship with your audience. Every week you're showing up, every day you're showing up, right? To record your podcast, to edit your podcast, to create social media posts for your podcast. And so you want to be excited about it and you want to be driven to share the content because you're in love with it, right? Because you're excited to do it. So I think that that's a really important aspect. And and knowing what your habits are and what you want to get out of your podcast is so important so you can build your production schedule, your marketing schedule into that. And it's a little bit of a slippery slope if you are appearing disingenuine because what's going to happen is not only is your audience going to expect you to continue to show up as you have been, but you're going to get opportunities to be interviewed on Podbean. You're going to be get opportunities to stand in front of a stage and share your genius. And if you have this character that you started off with, there then is the expectation that that character is going to continue on and on and on. And when you let that character drop and you show up as you are, your audience then doesn't know who was the real you. There's a disconnect. There is a distrust. And when you lose the trust of your audience as well as your peers, it is truly hard to gain that momentum back. So just show up whether you love who you are or not. Just show up who, as who you are. And just if you're having complications, finding your rhythm in, in who you are you know, I suggest therapy is a beautiful thing. <laughs> talk, talk to your friends. Do a poll. Be like, what is so great about me? Doing meditation, really investing in yourself before you invest in this medium. Because if you don't know who you are, it's going to be that much harder to gain traction. And this medium can eat you alive. Just like any type of form of art, it can be beautiful. And sometimes it could be very overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that that's something where also, you know, audience trust is something that we talk about a lot here at Podbean. And it's about consistency, right? And so if it's something where, you know, maybe you're too ambitious on the front end, and this happens a lot, you know, podcasters say, I'm going to put out a podcast every day, or, you know, I'm I'm so excited, and you kind of really front load your expectation. It's, it's something where you, you, you don't want to break that promise in a way. And so it's important to just be really clear about you know, what you can commit to, what you're excited about, what you want to say, and who you want to say it to. So I think that that's also a really important thing that you just said as well. Um, And in terms of creating content and content strategy, how do you advise your clients to keep their audience consistently engaged? I think you had a, a really great 
kind of starting example with that tax with the you know with the tax example you just gave in terms of personal finance but you know in terms of keeping that audience excited about new episodes every week in terms of creating content that resonates with your audience but also stays fresh what are some things that you talk to about clients cuz you know with crackers and soup you guys work with so many different podcasts right so it kind of runs the gamut of audiences and different podcasters and niches within podcasting as well so I think if you're excited, your audience is going to be excited. When you show up excited, the audience is going to hear your excitement and they're just going to ride that excited wave with you. I think also incorporating what is happening in today's environment, no matter what that is, that it, that you are passionate about into your podcast episodes are important. And this kind of goes back to who you are because if you are somebody who knows that they have to batch record, you're not going to be able to incorporate, you know, Taylor Swift going potentially to the Super Bowl. <laughs> like, you're not going to be able to to incorporate that that conversation in because when you do drop your episode, it's not going to make sense at the time. So if you are somebody who can record things closer to when the publishing date is going to be, I really highly suggest incorporating things that have been in the news that have been spoken about and you can do a couple of things with this you can t you can use it as a marketing perspective of sharing it on your social media you know Taylor Swift is all over the news talking about the Super Bowl and Travis Kelsey listen to how, to how I weave that into my conversation and my episode that drops you know, next week. You can also put it in your show notes because right now, SEO keywords, Taylor Swift is trending. So if you have her name and Travis Kelsey and Kansas, no matter if you watch football or not, if you put these things in your show notes, that's keyword utilization. That's SEO. So that is gaining traction for your episode and you're more likely to be heard by people who haven't potentially heard you before and they're going to like you because you're showing up, you have energy, you're loving what you're doing, you're loving what you're sharing and then they're going to stick with you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I want to skip ahead because you really address something that I want to talk to you about, which is SEO strategies, right? Search engine optimization is huge in podcasting right now and that's for several reasons, right? And when we say that, we're, we're talking about the fact that in general, search or Google, you know, whatever you're using to search isn't searching through audio files. So previously, podcasting would miss out on a lot of ways people could find you because, you know, maybe your show notes or the description of your show don't necessarily um, ha have keywords that are going to be able to help people find your show. But now there's a lot of different cool things going on. Number one is transcripts, right? Which is just, you know, important for accessibility reasons and making sure that everybody who wants to, you know, experience your show can in the way that they're able to. That's number one. And a lot of directories support transcripts, including the Podbean directory. So that's a really big one. The second one, like Bethany's saying, is in your show notes or in the description of your show. And there's a lot of different tools you can use. Uh, you know, obviously you can write your own, you can do your own keyword search. There's a lot of tools out there that do it for you. Podbean has tools built in that do it for you. Um, but you want to make sure that any text that you produce for your show is going to share what the episode is about. So when people are searching that topic, right, let's say, for example, um, the personal finance, I'm going to go back to that. Let's say somebody's searching, you know, oh, you know, what do I do if my taxes are late? That kind of thing. They'll be able to find your episode because of the text that you have published with your audio episode. So that's really important. Um, and Bethany, I'd love to hear from you about some of the different SEO strategies that you recommend for your clients in terms of better vi visibility. So I think show notes are so important, not only for search engine optimization, but also so that your audience is reminded what that particular episode is about and they can go back and listen to it at a at a later at a future date if mm -hmm. they were like, Oh, I need I need that advice again. It's very easy for them to find it via the show notes. If there's no show notes, you're kind of just like up in the air. 
So for my clientele, I we write show notes based upon their voice. And as you stated, we have very different clients who have very different voices. So in order to inhabit their voice, it truly is a gift uh, for myself and my team. But few and far between do we use AI such as ChatGPT because the majority of my clients are women of color. And it has been very hard statistically as well as articles have been written about these type of these type of services getting the voice of black, brown, indigenous people correct. So we could start off if you're comfortable using that tool because it's very much a tool and just making sure that you're asking it the right questions and sharing how your voice is with that tool so that it can create a podcast description for you if you are uncomfortable with writing copy. And then maybe asking it what keywords are going to be applicable to that episode if you insert the transcript in there. And then using those keywords just throughout the body of your marketing process. So you can use them without using them 112% in every single word that they they wrote. You can use them for the the little tidbits of things that are going to help you. And as you get more acclimated to writing show notes, you can feed those tools more information so that it better produces what you want. Or you can also, you know, just hire a copywriter to do all of your show notes and your writing. And I hope that they're doing SEO on your behalf. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And I think for anybody out there who's looking to get support for copywriting, that's an important question to ask, right? Hey, are you utilizing SEO based keywords? What are they for each episode? That's really important. And I think what you said is also valid in terms of the bias that AI has for different voices. So that's an an important consideration if you're utilizing AI tools, any AI tools, just to know that like, you know, it's a tool and you want to double check the work. I think that's true for any AI. And there's been a lot out there, even for ChatGPT, where it'll spit out wrong information. You have to fact check it. Like, I think there was something a while back about a lawyer, you know, submitting something and it's it uh, ChatGPT like cited a case that wasn't real. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. so I think, you know, it's it's always important to check to check your work and to make sure that those processes are working for you uh, is a really important aspect as well. And, you know, in, ter- in terms of that content strategy, I think that that's really important in terms of putting your episodes out, right? Making sure that all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed. What are some of the content strategies that you build out for some clients? Um, apart from, you know, specifically the show and the, the content of the show, um, and that includes, you know, the description of the show, the SEO, the transcripts. But what are some of those assets that you create in parallel to maybe the specific podcast episode content, maybe including the specific episode content that your clients use to build out a bigger strategy, whether that's marketing on social media, whether that's through an email newsletter? What are some things that you guys have built out um, as well? There are so many ways that you can market information just from one specific episode as you already mentioned newsletter you can create a blog from the transcript blog you can take videos and videos are very high in demand right now and create youtube shorts or reels and post that on your social media to bring attention to your podcast you can also take all of the information from numerous episodes and create an ebook because you have all of this information in your transcripts, just put it all together in a written format and create an ebook. That's another great way to market your podcast that people don't really take into consideration. Also, you can do create the workshops as, as we've already discussed. Um, you can do merchandise sales. You can do live events and engagements when my podcast is currently in hiatus. But one thing that we did was invite the audience to have a live bingo event online with our guests. 
and we made we sent them bingo cards and they could ask the guests questions about their episode and it was so much fun and it was something that nobody had done before so actually getting people to speak to each other after the episode is over just because a guest episode is over it doesn't mean that is that you wipe your hands of them you have to continue that collaboration. You have to continue that conversation. You have to continue that appreciation. Yeah. Because you never know if they're going to share your episode again because it falls into alignment with what they're doing. Yeah. So keeping up that rapport is so important for not only your audience, but also your guest speakers as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that cross promotion is super powerful. So, I mean, Number one, I love what you said about the bingo and events. We've had a couple of podcasts here um, that we featured in our events talk about the power of live events, whether it's in person, whether it's online. Um, you know, in January, we had the Dear Alice podcast from Alice Lane Home Design, and they had like an entire, you know, event in person that they also broadcast online where people could buy tickets talking all about home design and sharing a lot of their insight as designers, you know, that kind of thing. So whatever your niche is, there's, there's an opportunity for live events. There's an opportunity for video shorts. And I love what you said in terms of keeping that relationship going with the guest. It's not really like, oh, the episode's over and it's done. And that's for several reasons, right? Every podcaster will tell you, and this is so important, your most popular episodes, you never know what they're going to be. You never know who they're going to be with. And if they're evergreen, which most podcasts that aren't like a news podcast are, right? If they're if they are evergreen or they have content that's going to be continually valuable to your audience, those episodes may still perform for you and you may be able to monetize them. You can monetize them years later, right? And so it's important to make sure that you keep up that rapport with the guest and make sure that all of your guests have, you know, what you can give them to promote the show, right? When the episode comes out, can you just email through the links if you create Custom graphics for the show, can you just send those through? They can post them on social media with the links. Um, if you're creating a, a snippet or you're creating a clip for YouTube Reels or for Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts or TikTok, can you share those assets with your guests? If you're creating customized graphics, obviously share those with your guests. And it, you know, whatever you can do, it doesn't have to be everything. Let's be clear about that. Doesn't ha it's great if, it, if it's great if you can do everything or you can, you know, get support to do everything. But if you can't, what can you do? And how can you do it, right? For every guest, is there maybe a form they can fill out with their social links? You'll have them in advance. You can tag them when the episode comes out. Can you make sure you send them a follow-up email with your social links, your links to the episode, you know, on the top platforms that you know? You know, when you're looking at your analytics on Podbean, we're going to tell you where your audience is listening, right? Maybe they're listening on the Podbean app. Maybe they're listening on Apple Podcasts, right? Hey, you know, then share the Apple Podcast link, right? Add to that directory following that you have within a specific directory. That's super important as well. Um, and just making sure that your guests are supported. Um, and then you can also, you know, keep in contact and add them to your email newsletter and say, you know, hey, you know, you were on one of our episodes and here's the episodes we have coming up. And it may inspire them to stay in contact with you. And as they have bigger projects coming up, they may want to come back on the show, things like that. So it is so, so relational and super important. So I think that that's a really important aspect that you said as well in terms of, you know, keeping the guest as part of your community is super important. And it's going to create that sustained audience growth and development because as listeners come into your community and as they grow within your community, they're going to feel like they're a part of something with your guests, right? And podcasts are a very intimate medium. Like you said, your audience can hear your excitement. And that's that has value. You know, I think a lot of the time, excitement and fun are underrated. Right? And passion Absolutely. is underrated. <laughs> and podcasting is one of the few mediums where it is so vital to your message. You know, and, and that the tone of your show may not be bubbly and exciting like we are today, but whatever it is, you got to have passion for it and you got to be excited. It's got to feel fun for you and feel manageable and feel possible. And that's really what we're talking about here today. So I think that that is a really great point you said as well. Um, and I want to talk next about branding because you help a lot of shows launch their brand, launch their show, whether it's the overall show, whether it's, you know, a facet to their marketing for a coaching business or something like that, um, or whether it's a new season of the show or a rebrand, 
you know, in terms of the consulting that you offer on podcast branding and the clients that you've worked with, what are the key elements that you emphasize in terms of making a podcast stand out? Because there's so many podcasts out there. I think branding is essential. Whether you are trying to brand or not, your podcast is an extension of you. If you want it to be an extension of your business, it's going to be an extension of your business as well. But at the bare minimum, your podcast is your brand. So if you have a business that has particular hex codes, that has a particular mood board, you're going to want to incorporate those type of things that make your business aesthetic you into your graphics, into your cover art, so that you, everybody knows all of this flows and coincides. If you do not have a podcast based upon a particular business that you're trying to use it as a marketing tool, but you're just trying to use it as for personal enrichment, find out which colors you love because you're going to be seeing those colors excuse me, you're going to be seeing those covers, those colors a lot in your graphics in order to be consistent. What you want to do is kind of trick your audience's mind. When they see those warm colors, those warm oranges, those warm yellows, they're going to think of crackers and soup because our entire brand is warm, delicious fall colors. I have those colors behind me. I have those colors on the website. I have our those colors in my earrings. And it's not even that I try to do it intentionally. I just love those colors. So, <laughs> so when you're trying to, when you're in the beginning stages of creating your podcast, don't just go to Canva and slap something on and call it your cover art. Really be intentional on how you want your podcast to feel, the vibe and the mood, and then bring in things that you already love and enjoy into that embodiment of that mood. And that is going to set you apart. When you're when you're trying to find music for your intro and your outro and your trailer, find number one, find royalty free music. Don't don't get sued for using Beyonce. <laughs> you don't want to deal with that copyright infringement. But you're going to want to choose music that lets your audience know the mood and the vibe of your podcast. If your podcast is based on meditation, you're not going to want like a jumping out oh, as your intro. That's going to be very confusing as all of a sudden it transitions into and you are sitting down quietly. Well, you just got me hyped up with this just beat, beat, beat intro. So those type of very intentional and thoughtful immersion of things into your podcast is going to set you apart from people who are just throwing spaghetti at the wall all willy-nilly hoping that it works out. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I think tying everything together to create a consistent and coherent feeling an understanding of what your podcast and your brand offers is really going to help in the long run, right? It's something where, you know, and we've seen this time and time again, a lot of podcasters will start out with something that they put together and then they'll they'll rebrand, you know, and, and it's okay. It's never too late. It's never too late to make a trailer for your show and it's never too late to rebrand. Let's be clear about that. Um, and, you know, it's something where I think being intentional about that and, you know, when you're creating graphics, you know, what's it going to look like for your show is the are the colors going to connotate and explain maybe the feeling of your show, right? Like you said, for a meditation podcast, you're not going to use super bold, bright colors to, to display, hey, this is a peaceful meditation podcast of mindfulness. You're going to use maybe more muted colors or, you know, something that conveys the feeling of, of your show. So I think that that's really important as well. Um, and in terms of you know, in terms of that branding, and I just also really quickly want to say on the graphic side, think about how you want to use those graphics when you're creating them. When you're creating, you know, the fonts and the colors and the layout of your episode artwork, and that can be for your overall cover artwork for the show. Um, you want to think about how that's going to translate to graphics of different sizes for different social media platforms. If you want to create a version where you can pop in 
a guest photo, right? And you can just, you know, refresh that every week and just change the photo and the name and, you know, they can share that, that kind of thing. Those are all really important considerations because you want to have that consistency, right? You don't want to have something that's totally different on a different platform and people don't understand that it's the same show and your audience can't connect from one place to the other. So I think that that's really important as well. Um, and you know, you want to have a graphic maybe where if you're doing a short, you can pop it at the be end of the short, right? Hey, this is our show, you know, boink, here's the, here's the graphic of it. And then they, and then they automatically associate whatever, you know, nugget of wisdom they, they received with the colors and the feeling and the brand of your show. So I think that that's really important as well. Um, and next I want to talk about building a loyal and interactive community around a podcast. So interactive being, you know, the highlighted thing here of that engagement piece. So what are some things that podcasters can do to create that consistent engagement with their audience and keep that conversation going maybe before or after the podcast episodes drop? One of my favorite things that I do with a handful of my clients is we have a question of the episode. So we actually, the host, I should say, not me. <laughs> The host presents the audience with a question at the end of the episode. And that same question is in the show notes. And then they can reach out to the host via email or through social media and share the response to the question. And then the host invites that opportunity to either read the answer in an upcoming episode, or just reply back to them if they don't want to share it with the entire podcasting community for that specific podcast. And having that rapport where you ask permission, when you say, this is a great re reply, do you mind if I share this in the upcoming episode? And if they say no, honor that. If they say yes, Asking, are you comfortable with me sharing your first name and last initial? If they say no, say it's an anonymous reply. So developing that one-on-one -on -one connection, I always try to emphasize the importance to my clients that they're talking to one person. They may have 10,000 downloads for that episode, but when that person is listening, they think that they're talking to them. Yeah. One person. So using phraseology like, hey, everybody, or you all, no. When you start off your episode, start off with, how are you today? Genuinely, how is your soul today? That person that's listening is probably going to start crying because probably nobody asked them <laughs> how their soul was today. <laughs> They're like, I needed you to talk to me today. I needed that. Thank you. So that is a very strategic and caring way to bring your audience into your orbit. Another thing that I really love working on with my clients is Patreon accounts. Because that allows the audience to actually have live question and A's with the host. It allows the host to say, oh my gosh, I didn't explain that particular topic in greater depth. I can do that in my Patreon. It gives the host an opportunity to say, hey, listeners, I would love to give you homework. Let's talk about that homework that I just gave you when it's completed. Let me give you listeners a survey that you will probably fill out because you're a part of my Patreon. <laughs> Instead of just asking your audience to fill out a survey when there is no real follow-up that could be done. It could just be any willy-nilly, hey, do my survey in the show notes. But when you're in the Patreon, you're more apt to actually fill it out. So I love 
having my clients give their audience the extras from the Patreon account. It's so much fun to see because I, I manage their Patreon. So I'm so nosy. I'm like, oh, my God, that's such a great question. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so intrigued by the members that join Patreon. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think you said a couple of great things there that I want to that I want to kind of go back to. Um podcasting is a very intimate medium, right? We're listening, you know, occasionally you listen in the car, but most of the time you're listening on the same device where you talk to your mom, where you talk to your kids, right? Where you connect with your family. And so that feeling of connection doesn't stop because you're on a different app, right? That's number one. So that one-on-one feeling and opportunity is there, which is really cool, right? And so remember that when you're when you're liaising with your audience. And I love what you said also about the questions. I want to talk about Patreon in a minute, but what are some what are some questions that some of your some of your podcasting clients have asked that have been answered by their audience and community and that have really resonated? So one of my clients that comes to mind, she speaks about spirituality and how it has been become perverse over the years. And she was talking about intention and how at one point people were saying your intention, if you don't do your your intentions this way, it's wrong. If you don't feel intuition this way, it's wrong. So one of her questions was uh, on a daily basis, how are you feeling intuitive? And then people share, you know, I know that I am in my right intention because intuitively I feel it in my stomach. It's it's a visceral in my solar plex. Or I I hear buzzing. Or I know that I am not in the correct intention when I get throat congestion, Mm -hmm. you know, I get flummy, you know, so (laughs) people sharing. And I, and I think it's a beautiful thing too, because it makes people sit and have to actually think, how does this resonate in my body? Mm. Another podcast where I do, where we do question of the episode is two sisters and they talk about they have a age gap of almost 10 years mm-hmm. and they talk about what it's like doing everyday things with that age gap such as dating how dating is very different from one versus the other job opportunities and some of the questions are how do you navigate getting a job and and your age bracket Because it's very different from me trying to apply to a job versus a 20-something trying to apply for a job. It's very different experiences. So something as simplistic as that, just making an opportunity for the audience to think, huh, I never would have considered that a different generation has different dating experiences. I've never been on a dating app. I don't know what that means. Like, But now in today's day and age, people that are 20 never knew what it was like to date without a dating app. So these type of questions are just questions, just simple questions of the day to make you think. Yeah, I love that. And so on each episode, you know, if you're going to use this question of the episode strategy, which is fantastic, right? And it really solicits engagement within the episode and then you know people are going to reply via email via social um you know and obviously it's in the show notes as well when people are replying you're going to read their responses and then you're going to ask the next question so it kind of you know it feeds into this rolling revolving uh engagement with your audience so that's such a great idea and strategy in terms of keeping that engagement going with your audience on a direct level because a lot of the time you know if you're listening to a podcast nine times out of ten you're gonna have a thought about it you're gonna have an opinion about it right you're gonna say oh well this is what's true for me right and so I think you know being able to participate and feel part of the process as an audience member is important um and fun yeah 
And and I think also with social media, it's very easy to post the question of the day and and have that transition over to online. It's a very easy graphic to create. <laughs> you just have your your particular colors and you write out a question. And then when people start asking, oh, where did this question resonate from? It resonated from my episode that's going to drop, you know, such and such and such. So it's a very easy and casual way to get other platforms engaged. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you had spoken a little bit about patrons. So I want to talk about some of the strategies that you utilize for monetization for your clients. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, we want to talk about ads all day, every day. That's like our jam. We love it. Um, so we can talk about ads, you know, in terms of host red and, and all of that. And, you know, especially for podcasters that have a business or have a product or a service they want to build in. But what are some of the monetization strategies that you suggest for some of your clients and, and what have you really seen work in terms of monetizing, but also consistently getting those dollars? I think we need to change the way we think of monetization. I think the majority of people think of monetization as sponsors and as ads. When it really is a culmination of different things. If you are offered an opportunity to speak as a guest on a podcast. And because you had that conversation and that invitation, you then get new followers, or you then get a new discovery call, or you then get a new client. That is monetization. You're getting foldable dollar bills because of how you presented in that podcast, in that forum. Also, I think for sponsors, it is quote unquote, industry industry standard to look at download numbers. When I feel, and I tell people who reach out to me for podcast consultations, that you should really look at what you're using in your everyday life and reach out to those particular companies. If you love these earrings and you all of your jewelry is by this particular brand, reach out to them and say, I love these earrings. I buy them for my aunts and my sisters and my cousins for Christmas. And I have a podcast that has nothing to do with earrings. But the fact that I love them so much, I would love to shout you out. Would you consider being a sponsor? The worst that they can say is no. You can also potentially get a free pair of earrings for things that you, if you're saving money, monetization. <laughs> So really looking into your everyday and what you naturally share about companies to your friends and your family, those are the people that you should be reaching out to. Don't reach out to a sponsor regarding something that you don't even use. If you don't use hearing aids, but the sponsor of the year is a hearing aid, don't reach out to them because it's going to be weird when you're sharing that ad and that content because it's just a, not a natural flow of what you do. And also in regards to ads, you don't have to have an ad drop. You can actually have a conversation with your guest or with your audience talking about that particular product. Oh my gosh, I was so excited today. My earrings came in. I'm gonna rock them for this party this weekend. You just dropped the ad for that earring. And it was so natural that your audience didn't feel like it was an interruption from the conversation at hand. Absolutely. That's such a great way of thinking of it. And monetization comes in so many different ways, right? I mean, at Podbean, we work with a lot of big brands. We have big ads. We have programmatic built in. And there's a lot of podcast monetization that's relational, right? A great example, last year we had Kira Deneen from DNA Today come on, which is a fantastic podcast about DNA right? And so she's got a very specific audience and a lot of her sponsors, she's able to have come on as guests, right? She's able to have them come on and talk about, you know, maybe DNA testing that their company does or things like that. And it really is the perfect fit for her audience. And it doesn't have to be, you know, pushy sales. It can be like, hey, you know, this is a cool, amazing thing in the industry. And, you know, this is who's made this episode possible or who helps, you know, have the show 
out there, helps get it, helps us get it out there. Um, and so I think that there's ways to find the products and services that you align with, that your audience aligns with, that's on topic for your podcast, right? And like maybe with the personal finance example that we used a little bit earlier today, uh, it could be something where maybe there's companies out there like uh, finance apps, budgeting apps, things like that. You know, don't don't feel like, you know, yes, go for big brands and also don't be afraid to go for smaller brands, companies that you use, right? We've all got budgeting apps that we use. We've all got, you know, uh, books that we read, things like that. There's always going to be those indie companies and small businesses that you can work with one-on-one to create those relationships. So I think that that's a really important aspect as well. And a lot of your clients also have their own products and services. And so that's built in because you're already sharing the wisdom, right, from your expertise from your offerings in your podcast. So don't be afraid to mention it and just, you know, not in a pushy way ever with podcasting. I think it's it's something where, you know, and I think that the folks at Dear Dear Alice said this. They said, um, nobody wants to be sold, but everybody wants to buy. And so I think, you know, I've really held on to that one, um, at least from the last month. And I think it's a really important f- thing to remember is that informing people about stuff is okay. You don't want to be pushy, but you want to let people know. Um, And that's what's great about podcasting is that it it is relational and you can let people know about things in a way that isn't salesy as well. Absolutely. And if you are not saying that your business or your personal brand is your sponsor, you're doing yourself a disservice. At the bare minimum, you have at least one sponsor, and that is yourself. Because if you are not paying somebody like my production company, you're paying you're, you're paying in time. So you are investing somehow, mm-hmm. some way in the creation of this podcast. Please sponsor your own podcast. If you're not talking about your business, you're doing a disservice. If you're not putting a link to your business in your show notes, you're doing a disservice. If you're not putting your next workshop, you're doing yourself a disservice. Start doing, if you do nothing else, if you heard nothing else from this conversation, start doing that. Not now, but right now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that that's Just an important thing to remember, you know, it's easy to forget and it's easy to say, oh, you know, I want to promote other people's products. But if you have a product, promote your own product. And and that's hard because, you know, it's it's vulnerable, but it's also super important. Um, Well, Bethany, we only have time for a couple more questions. But the next thing I want to ask you, you know, specifically because you work with a lot of black and BIPOC podcasts and podcasters. And so in your perspective, you know, what can everybody learn from black and BIPOC podcasters? Because, you know, I think we spoke about this a little bit with AI in terms of the inherent bias and just making sure you double check that work. Um, But what are some other things maybe that translate over to everybody that black and BIPOC podcasters have had to learn? I love this question because I feel like marginalized voices are resilient. We will keep on keeping on on no matter what barricades we come up when we want something we will continue to do it until you are forced to hear us (laughs) and things are forced to change so that would be what i believe is such an important criteria to have that's global to whomever wants to be in podcasting in any facet You have to have, and I hate the word grit, but I think that's kind of like the best word. You have to have that grit. You have to have that resilience. You have to have that do it anyway. Yeah. Nobody's listening to me. Do it anyway. Yeah. Nobody's following me. Do it anyway. I feel like I'm not connecting with anybody. Do it anyway. Because the minute that you are like, I wash my hands of it. That is when the ball was going to start rolling. That is when you are going to be offered that opportunity that you've been working so hard for. And you're going to be checking in with yourself to know, is this something that I really want to continue with? Or is this something that I'm just feeling kind of a little bit defeated? Be honest with yourself. If you're just feeling defeated, how can you get your, your excitement back in your podcast? If you really don't, 
want to continue it any longer, don't continue with it. It's great. I'm sure you have a whole bunch of learning lessons from this experience of podcasting. But don't stop just because you're not getting the results that you anticipated that you would get by that time period. That is so important. I mean, I think, you know, everybody wants to be that anecdotal success story, right? I started a podcast and now I have millions and millions of downloads every month and we've only been out three weeks. Um, And that is very, very, very rarely true, uh, even for the people it is true for. Um, So that's an important thing to remember. Um, And to be honest with yourself and to have fun with it, I think is, is really important as well. Um, And you've just, you've, you've given us so much wisdom, I think, throughout today's conversation. Um, And we've got, you know, your links here in the description of today's event. Um, But finally, I'd like to ask you, you know, what's, what's one piece of advice you'd give to someone who's just starting their journey in the podcast, podcast world? Maybe that's creating their own podcast, or, you know, they've been a podcaster for a while and they're starting maybe to have a podcast service business. Whew. Hire people that are better at dot, dot, dot than you. You're not going to be great at everything. You have to know where your genius lies and then hire the other people to do the other things. And if you are not in a financial position to hire somebody, look towards internships. Look, look towards relatives that owe you a favor. <laughs> look towards people who are just starting out and their prices may be significantly lower than some other people. But taking that step to get something off of your plate is such an important piece that isn't discussed nearly enough. And that goes for people who are not even in the production side, but just podcasting. If every time you think of editing, it gives you a rash, go to Fiverr. <laughs> go, go, to, go to somebody else who can edit for you so that you don't have that reaction any longer. If you imagine yourself creating graphics and you're rocking back and forth in the corner, hire somebody else to create those graphics. The sooner that you can get somebody to do something on your behalf, the sooner you're taking your time and energy back from having to think about that particular thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to be different for every podcaster, right? And, you know, and you may find another podcaster through a forum or online. You know, we've got the Podcasting Smarter group on Facebook. You may find somebody, hey, I'd love to trade show notes for editing or, hey, I'd love to trade show notes and, and social copy and, you know, do SEO keywords if you can help me with my editing. You know, every podcaster has their strength. So I think that that's a really important aspect as well. And there are also a lot of, you know, a lot of th- tools that you can use, a lot of things that are built in, right? A lot of editing tools that are make things easier. So it's also important to do your research. You know, we love Hindenburg and Descript here. They both have integrations where, you know, they make editing really easy and you can upload directly to the back end of your Podbean account. So we love that. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of programs out there that enable you to have those shortcuts. So that's important to do your research there as well. Um, but I think it's also important sometimes to just know when to cut bait and say, hey, I'm going to put a little bit of money toward this and it's going to make my life so much easier so I can grow the podcast a little bit more. So I have the bandwidth to engage on social media with my audience and keep that excitement going. So I think that that is just such great wisdom and um, insight into you know how to grow your audience and to really keep things moving in the direction of positive growth. So Bethany, it's just been such a treat to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And shout out to Hindenburg. That is the DAW that I use. It is so easy to maneuver. I absolutely adore it. I I need more people to talk about Hindenburg because oh, they we are love it. We stellar. love it. We I love them so much. They're just, they're fantastic. <laughs> we'll have the link here in the show notes for today and in the description of today's episode. So if you do have any questions, you know, we we have a list of programs that are really easy to use with Podbean so you can edit and then, you know, you don't have to download, re-upload. There's a lot of benefits um, to just making sure you know which program works for you. And that that's really going to enable you to free up energy to focus on maybe making 
uh, supplemental content, social media content for your show, engaging with your audience, creating ideas for new episodes, recording new episodes, reaching out to guests, you know, it's going to free up a lot of bandwidth for you once you have those processes in place. Um, well, Bethany, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to read our, our brief outro and then we will wrap it up for today. Thank you everyone for joining us at Podcasting Smarter for our February live event, Amplify and Thrive, Growth Secrets from a Black-Owned Podcast Business with Bethany Hawkins, the founder of Crackers and Soup, a thriving podcast service business and production studio. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Podcasting Smarter has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and experts throughout the industry. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast, so make sure to to check that out as well. This event is one of many resources. This event is one of many resources and events Podbean offers for free to empower you to launch and succeed in your podcasting journey. We also have some great events coming up for March that are linked here in the description of today's event on branded podcasting with RNLI, the UK's lifeboat charity and their 200th anniversary and everyone's favorite topic these days, AI and how to use AI in podcasting. So if you join late or you want to have another listen to this conversation, you can replay the live stream on Podbean's YouTube channel and our Podcasting Smarter podcast where we will have highlights and insights from today's conversation. Podcasting Smarter is brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast today, head over to podbean.com. And if you have any questions, you can always email us at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com. That's podcastingsmarter at podbean.com. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned for more podcasting tips and best practices in the upcoming months. Happy podcasting, everybody. Thanks so much. <laughs>